Uh, and let me get the encoder up and running. And you are good to go. All right, we're back live. Terry and Gary's Low Expectations Facebook after being put on a 24 hour timeout from Dr. Britt Baker. Yes. Thanks for respect. joining us, Doctor. I demand respect. I went to school for eight years for you to not put the title in front of the name. That's a very expensive title. So and I'm going to need you to respect it. And, Terry, and explain I that to me. I apologize for Gary and I apologize myself. You know, we're not used to having a uh, doctor in the wrestling business, a real doctor. That's which, right. Um, now, uh, Gary, are you going to share this and stuff? Yeah, go ahead. Take okay. over. Now, um, Dr. Baker, um, do you have a lot of people asking you, like a lot of wrestling fans, to, do they second guess you as a doctor or do they think it's just a work, part of a character? And yeah. I, up up until about like when I was at least a few months into into AEW, people just thought it was a gimmick, and they mm -hmm. were like, "Why would she do that?" And it's and then when when they find out, oh no, she's actually a dentist. They're like, "Oh wow, like that that's that's impressive. That that's crazy." But for a long time, no one no one really knew that I actually am a practicing dentist. Right, right. And you went to school for how many years now? Uh, I did I did eight years total, four at Penn State and four at Pitt. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't understand, um, did you start off going to school and then get into wrestling or was wrestling first and then uh, going to school to become a doctor, dentist? So they, they were literally the exact same time. When I moved to Pittsburgh to go to dental school is when I, is when I started training at the IWC Wrestling Academy in Pittsburgh. So um, I actually, I, I was still living in State College at Penn State, but my wrestling class started earlier. So twice a week, I would, I would drive the, the three hours back and forth to, to get to training and back until I moved to Pittsburgh. And I loved every second of it. I was so hyped up because I just took a bump and I was like driving at three in the morning with all the adrenaline being like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a wrestler. So right. it, was, it was cool. Now, did you say Pittsburgh or Britsburg? Well, right. Britsburg. Okay. Obviously. I'm being humble, though. I'm trying to be humble. Okay. <laughs> That's something Gary does not know what to be, is humble. Yeah, he's right. always, you know, throwing that away. Before there was social distancing, he would make me social distance from himself. So oh, I think no. he, he's one yeah. of those. Yeah, he's one of those. And he wasn't even a champ, you know, so I could oh. see if he had a title, you know. I'm but, always a champ. <laughs> right. See? Come on. Well, that's no. a good attitude. I, I support that. Well, thank you. Right. Okay. Now, <laughs> actually, I, I, I'm not going to lie, Gary. I kind of like brushed my teeth before I came on and I made sure I flossed. And... I flossed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, because uh, I remember having a conversation with you about three or four years ago because I was missing a cleaning, right? They say every yep. six months. And you actually yeah. told me, you go, ah, oh, you could go a little bit longer than six months. What is the actual requirement for a cleaning? I mean, they recommend it at least once a year. As long as you're brushing and flossing regularly, like once a year. Um, if you're not, definitely every six months. And there's even some people that need to get deep cleanings every three months or every four months. But okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope and assume that you all take good care of your teeth. Yeah. And, and we could probably slide you under the radar into the one-year department. Right. Okay. I think they just wanted to, you know, get some money out of me. <laughs> sure. I mean, of course, it's a business, well, right? And, and, uh, exactly. And every year, um, what's the importance of getting x-rays too? Because a lot of times when you, I think it's annually or is it? Yeah. How often? Yeah. Annually. Um, if there's something going on, like if there's a small cavity starting, but it's like, eh, we don't need to fill this. Let's see if it'll kind of resolve on its own. They might take it your next appointment back. Or if you have an infection or if you have pain that you didn't have, before they want you like an x-ray shows you what's going on on the inside i can't see through your teeth but i can with right. the, with an x-ray so it's right. all circumstantial now as far as uh now if there's any type of cancer development underneath the gums would an x-ray pick that up or no if, if there's if there's something that's like throwing showing like a, if there's an alteration in the bone or if there's a lesion yeah it could but um most of that stuff can, can will like manifest you'll, you'll see it clinically when you look in the mouth and and mm -hmm. and I'm very very cautious. If I see anything where I'm where I even think it could be precancerous, I'm sending them to oral surgery to get a full evaluation. Right, right. 
Now, in the wrestling business, Gary, I don't know if you know this, but people chew tobacco quite often. My boyfriend, my boyfriend chews yeah. more than anybody I know, oh. and it's like the one thing we fight about. We don't really get into many arguments, but we fight about his dipping. And I tell him, one day, I'm going to be the one that has to cut your, half of your tongue off, and I'm oh. going to say, I told you so. Yeah. Now, when did he start doing that? He, so, he says when he was on the Indies, because he lived in eastern Pennsylvania, like more um, towards like Lancaster, that like closer to Harrisburg, and he was making all these long drives to Chicago and whatnot. That would keep him awake when he was driving by himself. Okay. Um, I don't care. It's an excuse. Right. I don't care. I don't support right. it. That's right. Cool. No, I um, I because I don't remember him dipping when we were together in Ring of Honor, but I wasn't on all the shows with him. I was just usually. At oh, he TV definitely. Or... He was definitely dipping by then. Okay, and yeah. and you guys have been dating for how many years now? Been about three and a half years. Okay, and he's still yeah. on. He's in next, still right? Dipping. NXT. Yeah. 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 Now, mm -hmm. if if people are watching, they don't know who your boyfriend is. Can you please tell? Them? Oh, Adam Adam Cole, baby. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> you stole my softball. I threw it. Cram. A few of those to show. How's he doing, by the way? He's doing good. He's yeah. doing really well. Nice. How are the parents? The parents, parents are great. We they're going going to church every Sunday still. They're watch they watch wrestling. They never miss it. My mom and dad, they never miss it every week. And they were at a couple AEW shows, weren't they? Yep. Yep. They flew to Las Vegas for the pay per view. At any any show they can get to, they'll go to. Pretty right, much. Right. Right. Obviously Pittsburgh. They had to they had to be there for Pittsburgh. Right, Pittsburgh right. show. How was it wrestling there in uh, Pittsburgh for eight that years? Was, that was really cool because we wrestled um, on the Pitt campus it, we, in their basketball arena. And it, uh -huh. that, it's called the Peterson Event Center, which is like the building directly beside the, where I went to dental school. And okay. the Peterson Event Center, there's like a little area in that building where I used to study until like four in the morning. So it, all you have to do is go down the escalator and through the doors and you're, that's where we wrestled. So that nice. it was really cool, and they um, Tony had had booked the Steelers mascot to come out with me for my entrance, which like as a Steelers fan was the coolest thing ever. And nice. we had like the terrible towels. All the fans had their terrible towels, so it was it was really cool. It was one of my favorite nights in wrestling by far. Nice. Like you're not an Eagles fan. Oh, uh, oh, uh. they no more. No. <laughs> Gary, don't get us on another timeout, please. No, nope, yeah, well, I'm you're happy right. she's not an Eagles fan because I hate exactly. the Eagles too. <laughs> oh, okay, good. We can agree. Yeah. Hey, uh, now you're originally from. Can you tell everybody where you're originally from? Punxsutawney. <laughs> and so that you're used to this Groundhog Day, then, aren't you? Every day. Hey, oh yeah. <laughs> I used to go Groundhog Day every year. Like it was, it's a holiday in Punxsutawney. You get the day off of school, and everybody goes to Gobbler's Knob. And it's it's a whole it's a whole thing there. Now, do you get asked about that famous movie with one of my favorite actors, Bill Murray? Uh, I would say, I would say, um, eight out of ten times when I say I'm from Punxsutawney. Yeah. Now, does it get annoying, or is that movie just became so embraced by uh, Punxsutawney, um, it, 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 where it's like you take pride in the movie, or is it just like, oh gosh, it's, another one? It's it's a fraud. I'm going to break your heart, but I'm going to tell you that that was filmed in Chicago, not in Punxsutawney. So oh I just have, I have to tell people, I'm sorry, but it's not, that's not, it's not the real deal. You want the real deal? You got to come to Punxsutawney. Are you going to need a minute, Terry? I'm definitely going to need, uh, I, need I, a I minute. I'm going to put me on a timeout. Cause I'm I don't honest. Know. I can't lie. I can't lie to you. Wow. I can't lie. Really? Right. No, but I mean, as far as having that film, you know, and, and, and Groundhog's Day, which is obviously, uh, tell us what are the two greatest things to ever come out of Punxsutawney? We got Punxsutawney Phil and... Dr. Britt Baker. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, Gary, this is how we get our uh, people to come back for another show. We got to sweeten. We gotta <laughs> That's right. Them. It's working. It's working. It's working. Oh, nice. Nice. So, Gary, you had a couple questions people wrote in. Oh, yeah, we have lots of questions. One question is, uh, do any of the wrestlers after a match decide to ask for, like, uh, dental advice or if you kick somebody? Oh, my gosh. Do so you get that oh. a lot? Or? 
all the time. And I, I have qu quite a few patients at my office that are WWE, NXT, AEW. I can't tell you who they are because that's a HIPAA violation. I don't want to, I'm anti-lawsuit. I'm trying to keep a clean slate. Um, but very, very often, and there's like wrestling tooth injuries all the time that like you don't even know, you don't even see on TV, but they're in my office the next day. Hey, my Philly came out, this kick ch chipped a tooth. So um, all the time. Are you being a dentist? Are you more careful when you're hitting somebody in the face or kicking somebody in the face? Do you have a little bit more, uh, you know, tension? Well, you... I think the nature of the business, if you're kicking someone in the teeth, you're an asshole. But <laughs> <laughs> if you, that, you're, just a bad, if you're just a bad wrestler, you're a bad yeah. worker then. So, I, yeah, I like to take care. I like to think, you know, I'm going to be a little bit safer. Try, I'm just, I just want to win. I don't want to hurt their teeth. Well, now we can work out a deal. I can send you some business and I can just say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and then, you know, knock out a tooth or something. And then we can split, you know, whatever you pull. Yeah. Each other, it's biz that's, a, that's a good business proposal. We'll have to <laughs> consider it. Right, right. Now, were you guys together before in uh, was it Impact or where were you guys? Have you wrestled together before? No, no I, I met... I met Rhino, it was at an, an I, this is a good story, actually. Yeah. Um, I tell this story all, all the time for, like, the start of my wrestling career, was it was an IWC wrestling show. There was a seminar that was being led by Rhino, and I was very, I wasn't going to do it because I was so new. Like, I, I had just learned how to hit the ropes, like, two months ago, maybe. Like, I was so, didn't, I didn't know anything about putting a match together, nothing. And I was like, oh, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm here. So from that point on, um, Rhino and I had stayed in, in contact. He says, did you, did you submit anything to WWE or, or, or anything? And I said, no, no, I, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Like, once I get the couple years on the right button, he goes, no. And you need to ask yourself, WWVD, what would Vince do? He would submit his information now and be ahead of the game. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, um, very, like, right after that, I had a WWE trial, and I did a ton of extra work with, WWE while I was still in dental school and he's always he's always looked out for me and always gave me great advice and kept an eye out for me so I've always been super appreciative of Brian and he helped me a lot well and that's another thing like um uh like Vic Joseph um, oh, Vic, Victor yep. Scrivalente, um uh Alicia Taylor she's a ring announcer like and yep. there's several other yourself um you know like Gary I've, I've, I've mentioned this before on the podcast is I'll, I can only do so much, you know, I can give you advice, but you're the one that would have to make the call, send the stuff in. And that's what Britt did. And she would, and, and one thing I told her, cause you know, a lot of people, especially that early in the business, um, they, they don't know if they should send it in because they don't think they're ready. And I, I explained to you and a lot of people is one, Vince wouldn't wait for the phone to ring. Vince would make the phone ring. And how are you going to do that by calling, getting getting your name out there, being seen, all that stuff? And a lot of times with NXT is they would rather have someone that's not necessarily trained so they can kind of train them the right way, opposed right. to trying to, you know, um, deprogram them and then retrain them. So, you know, it was, uh, that's why I was like, you got to get yourself out there because they might just, you know, you have a lot to offer, you know, and then they can train you the right way too, so. But, yeah. and, and actually, at the end of, of that tryout, Canyon pulled me aside and, and he said, like, we really like you. You have a lot of the qualities we like. But he, I remember, I'll never forget this. He said, because I thought I was going to get signed because they made me do, like, the extra physicals where it's, like, only the people that they signed did this, right. this extra step. And he pulled me aside. And he says, as a father, I have a hard time pulling you out of a professional education program. He goes, like, you're going to be a dentist. You, you need to finish your degree and be a dentist, which I'm so happy and so thankful he did that because if they would have offered me a contract, I was out. I would have dropped everything, moved to Orlando and, and became a wrestler. But um, the fact that I, that I finished dental school, got my degree, and now I'm still a wrestler, that's the best thing that could have ever happened. Yeah, and plus now you're – when did you start with AEW? Um, I started, So January was a year. And okay. that was one of the – when I started um, talking to, uh, about signing a contract – that was one of the first things, as I said, I, I worked really hard for, for my degree and it, I have a hard time stomaching, like never using it and, and just totally 
never being a dentist. And, and that would be probably, probably most likely the case with NXT their their need pretty much Monday through Friday sometimes Monday through Saturday with training and and studying and road shows and and a, there's just schedule is, is really rough and I would have never been able to do dentistry with that but this is is a little bit different like the schedule is a lot a lot lighter we don't travel as much um, we don't have a performance center which has, has its pros and cons but still it's for my situation personally as being a dentist, it's, it's absolutely right, ideal. Right. And plus they, they've embraced the fact and even WWE that, like you said, uh, Canyon said, Hey, I have a problem pulling you out of a, you know, becoming sure. a dentist and everything. And plus, you know, with AEW, it seems like, you know, they've embraced the fact, you know, of your, you know, uh, being a dentist and, oh, and, yeah. and, you know, so that, that, um, I remember when you told me you were going to sign and then, uh, you know, and it, it seemed like it all worked out the way it should work out and most beneficial to you. And plus to have a real doctor, you know, on your team, you know, that, that says a lot for AEW too. So anybody would be happy to have you. And just so you know, you know, obviously I'm, you know, been in this business a long time. We would have loved you back in the nineties. Cause we would have said, bring your uh, prescription pad. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like, I, you got I, 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 I got that a few times in the, in, when I was on the indies in the locker rooms and I was just like the, the new girl, like hiding in the corner, like, Oh my God, don't make eye contact. I'm scared. <laughs> you were, you were one of the first females signed by AW, correct? I, the, yep. The first, the first the one. First. So that's, that's, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good accomplishment. That's pretty, uh, they had high, high expectations of you, I, I assume then. Yeah, I had did the, the, the show kind of, it, it's not directly affiliated, but kind of associated the all in show, okay. um, which was the, like the first indie pay-per-view, I, I guess is what they kind of associated with. But um, that had a really good reaction and I, and I was in, in, in the female four way in that. So it was, it was really cool to kind of carry on and continue the storyline with everybody else that was involved, like the young bucks, Kenny, Cody, um, it's just, it, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now being part of the AEW team, um, you know, you, you guys got TV every week and stuff like that. And uh, mm -hmm. the ownership, I hear nothing but good things about them, the management. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, the talent and um, what are, what are some of the things that you have in plan, a uh, plan for yourself for the future with AEW as far as matches and stuff and, the character or the sure. path you yeah, want to so go with. Just in just um this year was the first time in my life that I've been a heel character, like like the villain. And it was something that I was it was it was Kenny's suggestion, like, hey we need like a a, a, he, a heel, a female heel. Like, what do you think? And I remember being like really scared because I was like, oh I, I mean of course I, I want to do it. I'd love to. I just don't know what I'm doing. And this is, it's actually where I've been thriving the most is, is with like heel promos and heel character work. Um, probably it's just a, it's just a, what, heightened version of myself, right? No, <laughs> um, but I really feel like um, having so much hands-on involvement with everybody else has helped me so much. I, Chris Jericho, I can't say enough good things about, he has helped me so much and I actually derive my character, like the, the, delusional self-proclaimed role model from his WCW work and it's so cool to get to literally ask him for advice and and also Cody Cody Rhodes tremendous helps with all all the new talent because there's so many of us we've never been on TV ever and then they show us they just kind of threw us to the sharks saying hey here we go you know buckle yeah. up and he's really really good with helping us because I think he understands that too um, right. Kenny is, is very hands-on with the women's division. He he's, runs the women's division and he, you can't say enough good things about Kenny Omega. He's, he's a genius. Right. So, and, and Tony Khan himself there, Tony is, he's the, he's the booker. He's the boss. He's everything. And he is hands-on like in the ring with us before the show. You can't, there is not a better boss in the world. I, I would put my life on that. If I have a question, a concern, an idea, I, I talk to him right away face to face and he will listen. He'll give you his input. He'll be, he'll be straight up with you. Hey, I like that. Hey, don't like that. Let's try to make this work. He's, he's the best. Yeah. And, and that's what I've noticed in wrestling. And I'm sure Gary can testify to this, like with comic cons and magazines and all that stuff and comic books, if you're a hands-on, you know, it definitely in, uh, helps the product, yeah. you know, like yeah. with, um, 
you know, with, uh, you know, when I was with WWE and even NXT with Hunter and even Vince, you'd have to wait because a lot of people would want to talk, but, you know, very approachable and, you know, the whole McMahon family. And then with uh, Impact, you know, yes. um, working with Scott, Scott is kind of like hands-on doing all that stuff. So, and that, that really, you can go to him with ideas before, after the show, you know, and have a line of communication, you know, on the days you're not at shows, which is good too, because you can kick around ideas. And I think that's why wrestling is where it's at. And wrestling's at a good state because in AEW, there's a lot of talent there, you know, um, and yeah. in, in, there's a lot of talent. And obviously with WWE, um, you know, and NXT, there's a lot of talent. So it's, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan right now. It really is. It's the, yeah. like competition makes everybody like exceed everyone's expectations. So the fact that there's so many opportunities to wrestle now and, and make a, like a legit career out of it is, is it's the best. Like this is the best time right now. No. Right. Have you always been a wrestling fan? I mean, did you grow up a wrestling fan as a kid or is that something you found? Fell in love yeah, with I, I've, I've definitely, I've all, I've always had like I, I've always knew, knew what wrestling was, and, and the 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 family that babysat me when I was a kid, um, they, it was all boys. It was like five boys. They always had wrestling on, but it wasn't until I would say more so my high school, call it like undergrad years, where I was like I never missed a pay per view. I was watching everything. And then when I was when I went to move to Pittsburgh, my friends told me, hey, you should try out for indie wrestling there because Pittsburgh's a huge indie wrestling scene and I had only watched the wrestling that I saw on TV or, or bought the paper free store so I had no idea what indie wrestling was so I, I started getting really into you know googling YouTubing everything indie wrestling and I was like this is kind of cool maybe I will try this out um with really didn't have any expectations of succeeding with it or it going anywhere but I was just like well I'm just gonna I just have to try it I'm just gonna try right that's a lot. I think a lot of people, uh, Gary, they, they're like, all right, I'm going to give this a shot, you know, yeah. and I'll, I'll put it all in, you know, I'll have my goals and stuff. And sometimes I don't know if you found it. Um, was, was it hard to share your goals? Like, you know, when you knew you wanted to be like part of a, a big company, was it hard to share? Cause you were afraid your friends would laugh at you. <laughs> oh like, yeah. I, like, I yeah. was like in dental school. <laughs> Um, I was essentially like the outcast. Like I was the nerd in dental school because they're, they're all like these prestige top scholars from all over the world, like all different countries. And then it's like, she's, she's not going to the library because she's going to wrestling practice. What? Like, who is this girl? So it's kind of funny that I was the nerd in, in dental school. Definitely. Uh, well, Gary, you got questions. If, uh, um, if you don't mind asking, answering a few more questions, uh, yeah, for sure. Well, one of them is from our good friend, Detroit Red Wing, Darren McCarty. He wants to know, what do you have against pepperoni on your pizza? I, I don't know where. That's a rumor, and, it, and it's, actually, it's a bold-faced lie. I love pepperoni on pizza. Um, the, I, I don't think that the pizza this week that was presented to Big Swole's face, I don't think it had pepperoni on it, but honestly, I was just saving the, the pepperoni. I didn't want to waste the pepperoni. So you hear that, Darren McCarty? She loves pepperoni on her pizza. That's right. What is something that you don't like on your pizza? Do you and do you eat ranch on your pizza? I do. I was just gonna say that I dip my pizza in ranch uh, re religiously. I can't. I won't eat pizza without it. It's just just it's the most satisfying combination ever. But right. um, I, I'm I'm not into. I don't like really olives and anchovies. Yeah. What are anchovies? <laughs> It's, like I, a I little, think... it's a little fish, but I, I tried it because I was like, I can't knock it until I tried it. It's just like yeah. pure salt. It's okay. Because I it's... always say no anchovies, but I never really know knew what it was. I, I think yeah. as a kid, yeah, I always just no it's, anchovies. It's no, it's no good. Just stay away. Mm -hmm. Stay away from yeah. it. And yeah. Patrick had the same question, and uh, then we have another. David wants to know what is a tooth and nail match. So the tooth and it's just kind of playing like the the saying fighting tooth and nail. It's just a play on words, but it's really a false count anywhere match. Okay. And then mm -hmm. Matthew wants to know: Is there one wrestling match that made you want to be a pro wrestler? Something you saw that made you just want to try it? No, I, I don't have like a match where I'm like, oh wow, that was it. But I think um, like the 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 four horse women were really. Uh, influential and inspiring to me so the Sasha Bailey
Lee, um, Becky, Charlotte, that, that group of girls is when I was coming up, that's when I was training. That's what kind of made being an actual female wrestler and, and kind of showing equality platforms for male and female that I think they are, were really the pioneers in that. So I would, I always attribute to where I'm at now and who I look to, to those four women. And Brad wants to know, since we're on the topic of pizza, for some reason, does pineapple belong on pizza? Because he believes it does. Yeah. I, I like it. It's not my first pick, but I, I do like a good Hawaiian pizza. We, we get that's some actually, questions. Yeah, that's actually a good question. Yeah, because I, yeah, I, I think you got to be, you know, in the mood for pineapple on your pizza. I don't right, think pineapple and ham. It's, it's a nice yeah. little, it's just a change up. If you don't it's want, you don't. Like you want pizza, you want something different. Right, right. It's weird. You'll probably get pizza questions from here for the next six months, you know, but run with it. That's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, I don't mind. Just tell them you, you demand uh, um, uh, like uh, gift certificates to like pizza places. You'll, you'll get a ton of yeah. them. You'll never have to buy another pizza. I need a, I need a Pizza there. Hut sponsorship. There you go. <laughs> Or Little Caesars. Hey, anybody, yeah. Domino's, she's up. Yeah, she's up. Papa anything. John's, any of them. We'll take any of them. I'm, okay. I'm welcoming all pizza sponsorships. Here's a question. Being a dentist, now yeah. what if a candy company came to you and wanted to sponsor you? I mean, you know, I'm always here. I my have, I like, will confess, I have the worst sweet tooth of anybody I know. Um, candy, ice cream cream it, it's brutal i actually my sweet tooth is so bad that like when when i'm dieting which is very often because we have to stay in good shape for wrestling i'll drink a diet dr pepper pretty much every day when i'm craving something sweet just to like make me not go insane so i'm always like brushing and flossing extra because i know like you're not it, you should not drink soda every day i do it but i'm allowed i'm a dentist you can't do it okay <laughs> that's just the rules you hear that gary i heard <laughs> I got, I'm drinking tea. <laughs> okay. That's a, yeah. that's the, you still got to brush your teeth after that, too. I will. How many times should someone brush their teeth? De that definitely at least twice a day. Morning and, and bef right before you go to bed. But you have to do it right before you go to bed. You can't go to bed and then eat or drink something after because then that's just going to sit on your teeth all night. Right, right, right. You can drink water, though. Yeah, you can drink water. That's it. Right, right. Okay. I had a question. Now, obviously, in history, what made you want to become a dentist? So, um, when I went to Penn State, I, I just went to college in, uh, like, a science gen ed department because I, I knew I, I liked something with the healthcare field, and I was good at science, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So, um, I spent the first two years just pretty much partying at Penn State and, and <laughs> blowing it off. And my GPA was really bad. I think I had like a two five GPA. And then that summer, my dad kind of like kicked me in the ass. He's like, well, you got to figure out what you want to do. Because if you're not going to take this seriously, then you're just wasting your money. And I was like, okay, fine. So I spent that whole summer of my sophomore college, my first, uh, my undergrad, just job shadowing nonstop in the healthcare field. Like I different like specialties. I did like uh, job shadow nursing finance business from top to bottom everything and then it was finally when I went to my dentist I was like this this, this is really really cool um because it was he, he told me that you can do the same procedure 10 times a day and it will never be the same because no two smiles are the same everybody has different challenges different bites different shape every and it's in, it's incorporating your own artistic ability into science and I and I was that, that really, the nerd in me was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Um, so then I went to my advisor, my academic advisor and said, I really want to be a dentist. And she took one look at my GPA and she said, there's no way you're going to get into dental school. So that's all she needed to say. I spent the whole next two years doing nothing, but just studying my butt off. I brought my, my GPA up to a three, seven. I did awesome on the, the DAT, which is the score, the test you have to take to get into dental school. And I sent that academic advisor every acceptance letter into dental school that I got just to prove a point of my being passive aggressive. <laughs> right. So Don't that's, tell that's Dr. Britt Baker what she can't do. Right. That's right. That's right. See, right. Jerry thought it was because of Hermie the Elf from uh, Rudolph. I do like, love Hermie the Elf. I love, I do yeah. love Hermie the Elf. So you were right. 
Did you see? Do you get, uh, like, do wrestling fans give you any gifts of Hermie the Elf or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite a bit. I have, like, I have a coffee mug. I have a sweatshirt. I wear the sweatshirt quite a bit, actually. Nice. Nice. I was actually, see, Gary, I told you. <laughs> I, was, I was wrong. Now, obviously, you know, we've learned about George Washington's teeth. Now, if if I could build a time travel machine and bring him back, would you be able to help him? And what would you do to correct his dental problem? Yank them all out, dentures? I think we would have to just do, yeah, a full mouth extraction and then do some implants and crowns. See, there you go. Because apparently Unless it was he's really cheap. If he's, yeah. if he's cheap, we'd have to do dentures. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary, it looks like we're going to have dentures when we're older. <laughs> Deep. <laughs> Wooden ones. Hey, we, we want to know about the role model thing. Uh, I see people are saying that that's Bailey's term, but I think that you were the first role model, correct? So I, I don't, I think she might have said it first in a promo. Um, and I actually had no idea. And I don't think anybody here knew that um, because we were just set, we were going off the, the Chris Jericho self-proclaimed role model thing. And I had, people kept saying, you know, how I'm, and when I was a baby face, how I'm such a role model that I did my, my dentistry degree. And then I'm also a professional wrestler and, and I'm really succeeding at both that I have two essentially plan A's. I don't have a plan B and I'm succeeding at both. And then when I turned heel, I just really leaned into that because people actually started turning on me because they were saying that so much. They were shoving it down their throats. Like she's a dentist, she's a dentist, she's a dentist. And they're like, oh my God, we get it. She's a freaking dentist don't anymore. Like, it's cool. It's great. Shut up. So <laughs> when I turned heel, now I say all the time, I'm a dentist. Like, and I'm a role model because I am a dentist and a wrestler. Um, and then when I, when I fractured my leg, we turned it into a role model, R-O-L-L. Um, so it had nothing to do with Bailey and I, and I love Bailey and I look up to Bailey and I, you know, I've, I've met her many times backstage at WWE, but it was not, not about copying her or stealing her gimmick. And, and if you follow the product, which now, now, since I noticed that I have been tuning in, it's, it's totally different, but she's still great. She's an awesome heel in what she's doing as well. Yeah. So basically it organically happened both at the same time with yeah. no intentions of, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And plus you mentioned Jericho earlier. That guy is brilliant. Yeah. Jericho. He is. Yeah. He they, is. Uh, they actually, uh, you know, they, he actually asked impact. Um, this is probably about six months ago. Um, you know, we we're out in uh, California about someone doing a show and, and I was available and I did a show and just, you know, it was nice catching up with them because I hadn't seen them probably, and about a year prior to that, when we were over in Japan, when he was with uh, WWE. And uh, even then, you know, I just talked to him about the business. And ever since I met him for the first time, I've been picking his brain. And it's just the knowledge that he has. And the cool thing about it is, is he's willing to pass it off to the, you know, yeah. to anybody that wants to learn, you know, and it's oh, great. I, anytime I have a promo, I try to, I try to pick his brain it, 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 every single time or, or tell him him my idea um and he's brutally honest too he'll tell you if something's like great or if it's stupid uh yeah. it, it, and, and just his ability to reinvent himself so many times and just it's like it's always a success it seems yeah and plus he has that ability to help other people out where it makes them a draw you know yes and, and he it creates benefits star. yeah yeah and it, he really does yeah. that's what he's doing orch cassidy right now is what he says yep. so, and i, yeah. I think orch cassidy is the, it's just a just a totally different kind of wrestler and it's just so it's refreshing to see his style of wrestling it's really neat yeah it's cool i like that banner between him and uh chris jericho though yeah <laughs> yeah orange cassidy um where was it i think it was chicago i'm probably messing this up but his his debut when he first wrestled because he was just doing the that he's not going to try thing for yeah. a while when he wrestled puck on the first pay-per-view it the it was deafening the the crowd reaction it was a full arena sold out and it was so loud for him and it, it was crazy because he did nothing before this didn't nothing not a single thing just the pretend kicks yeah. and then it's you have the whole crowd like screaming and going losing their minds for him because he did 
for like an arm drag. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first, I, I seen a couple of videos and, uh, you know, like the old school wrestling fans, um, you know, um, I can understand how they don't uh, get the character or they don't, you know, and uh, Ben Boone said it the best. He's too cool yeah. for school type deal. Yeah. You know, and I get that, you know, and then when yeah. you see it that way, you know, um, and that was the best way to explain it to me. And then I worked the show with them out in uh, Washington State and uh, not D.C., but uh, he, uh, I mean, the crowd was great. The match was awesome. And, yeah, he's so good. Know, yeah, and, and the cool thing about it is, is. You know, you you see it on TV. And, you know, when when there's fans there, you know the 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 excitement out of the fans. But when you're actually in the audience or in the arena, and you feel that from the fans as he's out there, you know, it's just it's it's a special moment, you know. So yeah, but yeah, yeah it's it's a really cool. So, but I know Impact they wanted to try to get Jericho, but he uh, he went someplace else. <laughs> so. He had Whatever other plans. Yeah, yeah. So I like how AEW is bringing the fans back slowly. I mean, you can see the difference, you know, in the reaction. Well, we have we have the we have the advantage of having an open. It's we're outside, so it's an open arena. Daly's place is an amphitheater, so you're still outside, and it's 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 big. You can space the people out to the different tiers and the different levels of the of the amphitheater. So um, it's it's nice because we really can safely space people out and they're, they're required to wear the mask they're doing the temperature checks to all of them so it's a nice way to slowly but safely um incorporate fans back right right yeah <laughs> yeah we always have an awkward moment in this podcast it's all there right it there it was you gotta <laughs> have, you have one awkward encounters with fans usually you know how sometimes fans are uh, um you know they're intimidated or or they're nervous around you oh yeah <laughs> Or my, the that? worst is when they when they try to take a selfie, but their hands shaking so bad that they can't <laughs> they can't take it. And I'm like, here, I'll get it. Let me take it. Like, right, right. Well, that was that's me. I'm I'm scared. The way you made her sound, he's like, don't look her in the eye. Don't make sure you don't call her Doctor Baker. Do make sure you do call her Doctor Baker. I mean, it's like, man, oh man, I was, I'm, I was scared for my life to go on this episode. Well, don't worry, I, don't worry about it. I'll take the selfie. It's fine. All right. <laughs> There you go. Gary, do we have a couple questions? Uh, yeah. What, uh, what is your dream match? That's from Matthew. Oh, man. Well, I, I guess since we're going to say dream, we're going we're gonna to have to do – we're going to cross the brand. So I would say my dream match would be with Sasha Banks. Okay. I'd pay to see that. Be, that would be awesome. And if there's ever a day or a time where we can do War of the – or of the companies, that's the that's who I would want. We got some more people saying they'd love to see you as AEW Women's Champion. Hope that's in the works. Uh, the demo role models, Chris Jericho and Dr. Britt Baker, coming soon. So, a lot of lot of lot of fan love for you over on the Facebook page. Oh well, thank you. And uh, do you have any uh anywhere you can be found besides the Instagram? Yep, I. I am at Twitter and Instagram, Real Britt Baker. Real Britt Baker. Mm -hmm. sure the fans know that. Terry, what do you got? Oh, no, that's, that's about it. Are we going to do that question, hot that's, or not? That's your question. That's whatever. <laughs> don't, don't you, oh, you, no. What's this? Okay. Well, we're not talking Listen, about Terry asked, Terry asked all the real hard <laughs> journalistic questions. Like boxers, okay. briefs, or you know, stuff like that. So, okay. Go ahead, Terry. Take it away. Well, I thought it would be fun. We're not dealing with any wrestlers, you know, so I might throw in one later, but hot or not, okay. we're going to ask you celebrity crushes. Okay. Are you able to do that? Like, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's cool. do it. All right. Um, Johnny Depp. Hot. He's my favorite. Literally my favorite. Pirates oh. of the Caribbean is my favorite movie ever. So right, right, yeah. right. Hey, tell her uh, who we had as a guest. Pirates oh, of the yeah, Caribbean. Oh, Martin No yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, cool. Yeah, he's really cool. He was telling me to shave my head. <laughs> what? So yeah. So 
And we have uh, uh, Jason Momoa. Um, I'm I'm torn. I okay. I'll say hot. I I appreciate what like the long hair and everything. So we'll go hot. But he's on my first pick. My okay, John Stamos. You just love John Stamos. Hot. Oh, good. Okay, I was gonna say we're gonna have. He was gonna, be, he was gonna be so disappointed if you said not because okay. he's talking. About him. We talked on the phone yesterday. You talked about him for like thirty minutes. Right. I, I had a conversation with Gary. Well, it was wasn't really a conversation. I was just telling him how I thought he was so hot and dreamy and all that. No, did you see that new progressive commercial that he's in where he yes. That I laugh every single time I see that, and I have to rewind it and watch it a couple times. Only you, you would rewind a commercial. What's that? I said only you would rewind a commercial. Right. <laughs> <laughs> only me. Okay, go ahead, Gary. Idris Elba. Um, I'll, I'll do hot. Will Ferrell. <laughs> not. Not hot. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, what about he's funny? He's funny. He is he's hilarious. Not the I love that. So I mean if 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 someone's funny, they might not be like Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean, but does that go a long way? With women in general. Yeah. So that might make I, I don't I, I don't know him, so I'm like uh, I'm I'm on the outside. I can only judge okay. by what I see because I don't know okay. him. Yeah, the question's hot or not. No, yeah, we, we don't know if he's like, we're not saying, like, is he a good person? Like, yeah. is it hot or not? Was he open right, door I'm for you? Up here. <laughs> <laughs> this is I your question. Come on, man. Uh, John Stamos or not. <laughs> well, you're probably still right. thinking about John Stamos. I would, I would just delete your number if you didn't. <laughs> That's fine. And I support John Stamos. I mean, he's okay, hot. Good, good. good. <laughs> All right, what, do you, what else you got, Gary? That was one of two actors I know. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this wasn't that long of a game. <laughs> yeah, that's a short one. Right, right. Well, you don't have any okay. more? Adam Cole. He's hot. There you go. <laughs> He's definitely hot. I said it, we'd ask one wrestler. So. There you yeah. go. All right. I know, all right. Is, is I know you probably for time, so. What's that? We probably should probably wrap it up. I know yeah. Dr. Baker's probably crunched for time. We appreciate yeah, you coming we, on. Thank yeah, we yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for only putting us on one day of a timeout. I will, uh, you know, I will make sure Gary never makes that mistake again, and I know I will not. I have it wrote Please, down. thank you. <laughs> Respect. Don't hopefully, forget. Hopefully, right, we'll be right. back. Um, next week, we have uh, Michael Lasky. He's former MMA champion, uh, also played Young Rocky in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and he was Colt. From Three Ninjas, so we're gonna have him Did on you ever next week. The Power Rangers, yeah. Nice. What about nice. Three Ninjas? That's, that's the about Pink your Power Pink. Rangers. So we'll Pink have him Power on. Rangers. He actually is gonna fight another Power Ranger in an MMA style fight pretty soon. So they're gonna he's gonna talk about that. And, uh, yeah. So, but thank we'll, you. We'll have. Are they gonna be in their outfits when they're fighting each other or no? <laughs> I don't think so. I think this is legit. They're going at each other on Twitter, so it's fun. Awesome. Hey, did you message uh, Dave? No, but we're still live, so <laughs> go ahead. So what uh what are what are some of your plans for uh when are you getting back in the ring and your you you said you mentioned your injury real quick? Yeah, so I'll be in action uh the pay per view tomorrow. Okay. Oh nice. So what the is nail that match with with Big Swole. Nice. What was the injury and how long was the, uh, were you out for? So in March, when, when COVID first hit, when we were filming in Atlanta, I had, I busted my nose pretty bad. So I, mm -hmm. I broke my nose and deviated my septum, but it was, it was to the point where they're like, you need surgery. But I was, I was really having a lot of momentum and I was like, I don't want to get it right now. And they said, okay, that's fine. We'll wait. Um, but then I fractured my leg, my tibia, and I and I tore my LCL. So, so once I got the leg injury, they're like, you're out for, uh, you know, this much time. You might as well get this nose surgery now, too, and just knock them both out. And I said, okay, fine. So I, I got my nose fixed, and then I got in my leg. I didn't have to get surgery, thankfully. It's just been healing. And finally to the point where I can I can get around on it pretty good, and I'm feeling good about getting back in the ring. 
Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then, um, uh, you know, and another thing that's, uh, you know, you've always been professional, you know, in the wrestling business. And, you know, as far as being a dentist, that's something you have to be as professional too, you know, work in dentistry and all that stuff. So, yeah, see, my friends, they're not professional. Right. Gary. <laughs> not yeah. even calling her Dr. Baker. How dare you, Gary? <laughs> so, but all right. Well, Mrs. Baker, we, uh, Mrs. Dr. Baker. Dr. Baker. Yes, we That's appreciate it. your time. And then uh, if you want, if you got to bounce out, Gary and I will wait for Dave to come back and close out the show. So tell All Adam. All right, thank Cole, you guys so much. Tell Adam thank you always said hi. I will. I'll tell and, him. Uh, yes. Tell your parents I said All right, hi. Thank too. you guys. Thank you. You're the best. You. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So, like I said, we got Olaski coming up. Then two weeks from now, we got Bill Morrison coming up. We got a pretty good September going. Now, are they any of those guys uh, doctors? Do we have to call them? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of questions, though. Oh, there's There's still more questions. Now you got people. You got people saying how hot John Stamos is. So, (laughs) well, hey, man, I gotta call it like I see it, man. (laughs) Guy doesn't age, man. Guy Uh, doesn't age. He ages well. I was looking at something. What's that? He aged well. Yes, yes. I I wish I could say that too. So I think Dave. uh, I think Dave. He was over at his buddy's house. Dave's doing day drinking, so we might be on for a while. Right. <laughs> good I, thing we let, good thing we we're like, Britt, you could Dr. Baker, you could go. <laughs> You've been like, all I'm right, guys. Like, this could be a while. Yeah, yeah that's that long goodbye. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, so, <laughs> it's so, so hard to say goodbye. Right, right. <laughs> so no, what a like I was telling uh, you know, earlier, you know, she really picked up the ball, you know, because you could tell when they want it you know, and I can only give you so much advice, you know, but, you know, it's like raising kids, you know, yeah. if you can give them the tools, but if they don't put it to work, it's up to them, you know, so. Well, I want to thank you. Me, she, she goes, uh, yeah, I was on Jericho's podcast, and I told him how you uh, were a mentor towards me, and I'm like, well, that's cool, you know, so, but anyways, well, and that's what I'm like, yeah, we should get her on the show. Oh, it was perfect, yes, I like, like, we need to get more of them. Yeah. yeah, I wish well, you would have been you the... for stealing my Punxsutawney <laughs> question. That was number one on my list right here. Yeah. What you about... me don't oh, I didn't know. We should have, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm actually sad that I brought it up because I didn't want to know it was filmed in Chicago. You broke your heart. <laughs> right. Now, I every guess. time I see that, I'm going to think of Chicago. Not that Chicago is a bad place, but I want my Punxsutawney Phil from Punks of Tony. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, um, yeah, not Chicago. It's a nice area, you know, wherever they filmed is nice, but yeah, they, they fooled me. <laughs> My wife said we're dorks. Right. Oh, you're just talking about <laughs> well, that. we're waiting for Dave to end our, Wait, end our show. Like, no, we'll just stay on. We got all kinds of catching up to do. <laughs> right, right. Where's, where's the missus? She's right here. Come on. <laughs> Hello, we we'll bring you on. Why is my big giant face? There she is. Right behind your big giant face. <laughs> yeah, you might want to text uh, Dave. I, you might want to check on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys are like just talking about random stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. We can uh, we all know. see it. We know. This, the, yeah. ratings are, the ratings are through the roof right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they took a big dive since uh, Britt checked out. Nope. Yeah. Oh, your message, I got you. oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. We can get out of here.